Guys, with interest rates going a lot higher in the last year, it matters more what you do with your spare cash in your brokerage account. Should you put that cash in treasury bills, CDs, or money market accounts? So I'm going to look at the different Schwab money market accounts, go over what they are, what's in them, how risky they are, and why different accounts might be suitable for different people in different situations, depending on where you live and what kind of account it is in, whether taxable or non-taxable. So let's go take a look. Okay, so to take a look at these, click on research on Charles Schwab, click on money market funds. So you have the prime fund, which is the most risky because it invests in U.S. corporations, foreign entities, financial institutions, and U.S. government. So it's a mix of all of these things, but it is the most risky out of all of these. The second most risky is the municipal funds because they are from state and local governments and agencies and all that kind of thing. And then this is the least risky, the government and treasury money market fund with short-term government securities, treasuries, repurchase agreements, things like that. So if you want to compare these to treasuries and CDs, well, these have treasuries inside of them, so they're just as safe as buying treasuries. And CDs are backed by the U.S. government with FDIC insurance. So basically, it's the same risk level as a treasury or a CD. These are not exactly. So they have some risk and they have some risk also. So let's take a look. This is the most risky, the corporate short-term bonds and things like that. And so it yields 4.27% with a minimum investment of zero. This is the same exact thing, except the minimum is a million. And so it yields a little bit better. Now, when you compare that to government and treasury money market funds, and they also have these million dollar funds as well. So I'm just going to ignore them. But you see, you get a little bit better rate if you put in a million dollars, 4.08 versus 3.93 with a Zero minimum. And then you come down here to the municipal money markets and you see they have a lot lower yields and you wonder why would I buy these if the yields are so much lower? There's a perfectly good reason for that. I'll get into that in a bit. So you see there's different kinds of money market funds. You can park your cash in your brokerage account and they have an advantage over CDs in that they're not locked in. You can buy and sell them anytime you want, although they kind of trade like a mutual fund where you get a closing price. You can't buy it and sell it all day long. But unlike bonds or bond ETF funds or anything like that, those bonds could go lower in price if interest rates fall and rise, whereas the money market funds have a set net asset value at a dollar. So in other words, you never lose money on the price of the fund. That is if there is no big turmoil in the market. And so during the 2009 financial crisis, one big money market fund actually had to break the buck as they call it. And so their Purchase back price was below a dollar, was like 97, and they had to shut down and all that kind of thing. So it technically could happen, but it was a rare case, and I'll show you why. So these money market funds are just funds with a bunch of different types of short term bonds in them, whether they're treasuries or corporate bonds, very short term. Well, in this case, the reserve primary fund collapsed, dropping down to. 97 cents or a 3% drop from the $1 that all these funds claim to maintain because they had a bunch of Lehman Brothers bonds in their fund. But even that was only 1.5% of the fund. But because of that, a lot of people wanted to dump this. And so it was kind of a run on the bank. And people got their money back because the government insured these money market funds temporarily during the crisis, although the people in this fund, some of them, it took like a year to get their money back. So there is some risk in money market funds, but that is when they're holding corporate bonds, when they're government bonds, it's almost no risk. And with municipal bonds, there is some risk, but it's still government issued. And to see what's actually in these funds, you can't click on this. You have to go to Schwab funds and then products, find prospectuses, so you go there, put mutual funds and money market and search products. So let's see what's in these. 
SWVXX got $98 billion in assets. The weighted average maturity is like 17 days. So these are very short term type of funds. Expense ratio is 0.34, which is sounds a little high. Let's see, the net asset value is a dollar. So you see the assets are a whole bunch of asset-backed commercial paper with maturity dates, March, January, February, and there's a lot of it. Bank of Nova Scotia, CD. So you see some of it is actually CDs from banks, which are FDIC insured. So these are generally safe, mostly because it's very short-term in nature, highly liquid and from highly rated companies, mostly but it's still a little bit more risky than government and treasury money funds. So that's why it pays a little more, but in terms of risk, it's not risky at all. And so the next one, the government money fund, SNVXX, 3.93%. Let's see what's in that. 11 billion in assets, weighted average maturity, 20 days, expense ratio 0.34. So it's filled with a lot of US government agency debt with maturities in February, March, that kind of thing. Repurchase agreements from JP Morgan, Mizuhu Securities, Royal Bank of Canada, and this treasury obligations pays a little bit more at 4.02% SNOXX. The weighted average maturity is 10.9 days, expense ratio 0.34, 15 billion in total assets. And so it's filled with a whole lot of U.S. treasuries that mature in February, January, um, even in September repurchase agreements. So basically these government money market funds are very similar. I would just pick this 4.02%. I have bought this before. Or if you want a little bit more yield, you can go with a little bit more risky, but still very, very low risk, 4 point. Now the municipal. So why would you buy these funds that only pay 2.59%, 2.7 and whatnot? Because the equivalent yields are like 4.3%, 5.24%, depending on what it is and what your tax bracket is. So why would people buy municipal bonds if they yield lower than the other government bonds or prime market bonds? Because of taxes. You see, municipal bonds, you do not pay federal tax on municipal bonds. And if you live in the state where the municipal bond is issued, you also don't pay state tax tax on that bond. So that's why really rich people in the highest tax brackets buy municipal bonds a lot because it shields them from state and federal income tax. And so that's why they have funds that are New York municipal or California municipal funds, because if you buy that and you're in the highest tax bracket, you're saving like 40% or more in the case of California, like 54% tax that you would have paid on that interest. So this is a special case for people in the highest tax bracket. It may not apply to you, especially if you don't live in New York or California. But let's take a look at how much you are saving by buying these if you do, right? So this one, 2.59%. The equivalent yield is 4.38%. Let's look at what the footnote says. So it says the taxable equivalent yield assumes a federal regular income tax of 40.8, which includes a Medicare surge charge rate of 3.8. Your tax rate may be different. And for the California and New York funds, so for the California municipal fund, they assume the 40% federal tax rate plus 3.8 Medicare plus 13.3% California state tax, which takes you to 54% tax rate. And for New York, it is 49.62 cent percent. So this municipal bond fund has bonds from a bunch of different states. And so they say that this 4.38% yield is the equivalent yield if you are in the 40.8% federal tax bracket. Let's see how that works. Just to keep it simple, let's assume 40%, not 40.8. So if you're getting taxed 40%, you only get 60% left. So what is 60%? 0.6 times that interest rate, which is 4.38. And so 2.58. So if you're in the highest federal tax bracket and you buy this fund, you're going to get 2.59%, but it's like the same thing of getting 4.38% and then paying 40% tax on it. You end up with this anyway.
And so that goes for the California one and the New York one as well, except in this one, you're saving 54%. And in this one, you're saving 49%. So how do you actually get these money market funds? If you want them, you go to trade, you go to mutual funds, because that's basically what they are, right? So you enter the symbol in, and you have mutual fund here. So this is the Schwab Treasury Obligation, Net Asset Value 1, Select Action, Buy, Minimum $1. So you could put any amount. So I put $1,000. Reinvest dividends and capital gains, capital gains only or none. Reinvest, click Review Order. And so you see it says you're placing an order for a money fund that trades like a regular mutual fund. So if you need cash in this account, you must sell shares of the fund, allow one day for settlement, All right? There's no transaction fee and the buy order will be executed on the 18th. Right now it's the 17th after hours. So it's like a mutual fund. If you put the order after hours, you get the price the next day. But in this case, it's always the same price. So then just place your order and you got the money market. So guys, that's a look at the different Schwab money market funds and how you buy it on Schwab. And so you see the reason that there's different funds is because people have different situations. And so if you're in the highest tax bracket, you might look at those municipal bond funds, especially if you live in New York or California. However, if you are buying this in a tax exempt fund, like an IRA or a Roth IRA, then you wouldn't even have to consider those tax consequences. So you would not buy a municipal bond fund in a IRA or Roth IRA. But one thing to remember, this money is not exactly cash. So if you have your money in one of these money market funds in Schwab and you want to buy some stock or something like that, and you don't have enough money, you have to sell the money market fund first, let it settle, and then you can go and buy that stock with that. I hope you like this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.